Hello everybody, my name is Brent Johnson and I'm with Heartfield Automation. This week I'm going to show you how we go about put adding a timer into our project. Timers are utilized for turning on any types of outputs on a delay. We can either do an on delay or an off, off delay timer. This week it's going to be an on delay timer. I'm also going to talk about how we can go ahead and change our program cyclic time in the PLC to a faster cyclic time. It's a super powerful tool with BNR being able to adjust the cyclic time and how fast the, B, the BNR controller is scanning your program. All right, let's hop into it. All right, guys, I created a new project called Time on Delay. What we're going to do is we need to add a library. That's the, a library that's going to have this timer function block. So go ahead and highlight over libraries. And then what we want to do is scroll down here and then just click on library. Then click on BNR libraries. Just double click it. We want to add a standard library, so scroll all the way down until you, see, until you see standard, and then just double click on that. We've added the standard library. That's going to have our time on delay function block that we want to use for this project. Next, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and add a program. So go ahead and over here, and then we're going to click on program, and then just do a structured text program or ST program. Go ahead and double click on that. And then what we're going to do is first we're going to create some variables for this program. So go ahead and double click on it. We're going to add our first variable, which is going to be our sensor. And that's going to be a Boolean. Then we want to add our timer on delay timer function block. So it's going to be on delay on wait, delay. We'll do timer delay. Well, that's what we'll name it and then what we want to do is just double click in here and then click on the three dots and then instead of a basic data type we want to go down here and click on function blocks and then we, we're going to scroll down to the ton underscore 10 millisecond function block go ahead and double click on that and then you can save that and close out of there and then we'll do a global variable which is going to be our blue led i already have it made here but it's we've it's real simple just make a blue name it and then we'll have it be a boolean so go ahead and close out of there. Next, what we want to do is open up the cyclic, and then we're going to insert the code here for this program. So what we're going to say, we're going to say if sensor, whoops, sensor one equals true, then go ahead and we want to set timer delay dot. We want to enable it, and that's going to be this in. So just click on that. And we're going to set that to equal to true, semicolon. And then we want to set the time that we want this to take to delay on. And remember, this is in 10 milliseconds. So we're going to do timer again. And then we're going to do a dot. And then PT, this is the time that we want to set it to delay for. And I'm going to do 100. Now, that's not going to be 100 milliseconds. It's going to actually be 1,000 milliseconds because this is a 10 millisecond delay timer. So it counts in 10 millisecond increments. So it's going to be 100 times 10. Next, what we're going to say is we're going to put an else statement here. And we're going to say timer, whoops, timer delay dot in. So if the sensor is not true, if the sensor is not true, we don't want this timer block to even work. So we're going to say false, just like that. And then we're going to end the state, end if the if statement, just like that. And then the next chunk of code, we're going to actually have this tied into our output or our blue LED. So we're going to say if time delay. And then dot Q, so this is the output. So if the time delay output Q equals true, then we want to do G, the G blue LED, we want to set that equal to true. Else, we want the G blue LED set equal to false. And the if statement right there. And then lastly, we need to call this function block. So what we're going to do is we're going to do timer delay just like that. And then two brackets like or two parentheses like that. And that what that's going to do is that's going to actually call the timer function block. 
So that's really the program. One other crucial step to this is I want to set the cyclic. Right now, this cyclic could be going in a different cyclic. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to go over here and we're going to right click on the controller in physical view and we're going to click on software. You'll notice that the program we created is in cyclic number four. So that means it's going to scan every 100 milliseconds. If I want this to be in cyclic number one, where it's scanning 10 milliseconds, that's a way better deal. It's going to be it's going to be scanning every 10 milliseconds. So I can just left click on it, drag it up under to cyclic number one. And so now this pro program is going to be scanned every 10 milliseconds. Another thing is we can even change this to a faster scan time for this cyclic. So a way to do that is we go over to here, right click on the controller again, whoop, and then click on configuration. And then what we want to do is we want to go down to resources. And then what we want to do is we want to do the cyclic task classes and then click on cyclic number one. And then here what we're, we can do is we can change the duration. So right now it's set at 10,000 microseconds, which is 10 milliseconds. Let's change this to 1,000 microseconds, just like that. And then we'll make the tolerance set to zero. And what that means is now it's that first cyclic task class task class is going to be scanned every millisecond by the PLC. We can actually make this even go faster if we wanted to. We could go down to 800 microseconds or 400 microseconds, but for this project, we'll just keep it at that right now. So go ahead and hit save all, close out of there. And then what we're going to do is, and you can see it changed to one millisecond there, close out of there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to save all, and then we're going to go in and we're going to go online and simulate this project. So go ahead and click activate simulation. It'll take a couple of seconds here for it to say online in, in run mode. So we're in run mode, we're in simulation view. So let's go ahead and transfer this project on down. So it's going to build the project. And now I can click transfer. All right, it transferred it on down to the simulation. Now we can go and back to our logical view, right click on program, click on open, and click on watch. Then we're gonna add all these variables. So hold down the control button, and then left click on each one of these, and then just click add. And now we can test this out. So basically, I'm gonna have sensor one, I'm gonna change that to true. And you'll see it counts up and then it goes true. The G, it took a it took a second for it to go true. That is what the on delay was. And I can change this back to false and it resets everything. So now my G blue LED is false. All right, that's what I wanted to show you. It's really great. We can do a lot of cool things with on delays for turning on, delaying an output after your sensor sees something. All right, we'll talk to you later. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching this week. I hope it was informative and you learned a lot about how to utilize timers, especially on delay timers in your program. And I hope you learned a lot about how the cyclic works and how you can adjust the cyclic scan times of these BNR controllers. If you really like these videos, I do have a YouTube channel. Feel free to go ahead and hit subscribe. There's lots of other great content related to these types of, about related to this type of technology that may be of use to you. And uh, yeah, just hit subscribe and you can get all that other great content. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you have a great weekend and please stay safe.